very quickly let me show you how to let it flow how do you let it flow number one you must yield when the holy ghost came on jesus matthew 3 17 the bible said the spirit i like the way it was put in mark 1 12. matthew 4 1 luke 4 1 said he was led mark 1 12 said the spirit drove him into the wilderness if you want to release what you carry because now we are dealing with people who have the holy spirit we want to show you how to release the powers of the spirit he will drive you he will drive you there are times when for weeks it looks like eating before six is a sin is the driver walking through your soul because a season has come you are pregnant travail must happen for something to be born there are times when for months to talk looks like an iniquity you won't find anywhere that is written that don't talk but you will know that if you talk something will go wrong you will find out that you are empty because the pressure of the spirit that is designed to drive you came with a law he drives you through laws counsels and consecrations so those who understand the drivings of the spirit when they sense those promptings their job is to yield because if you don't yield you will quench the spirit that's why paul counseled first thessalonians 5 19 quench not the spirit too many are quenching the spirit in the night 1 a.m you wake up you don't know why you have been driven you notice the pattern is consistent for three days or god set an alarm because after one week you will wake up again and what you will not realize is that a cycle has passed maybe it will come back in five years you you are the one who think your age is 35 your age is not 35 your age is six cycles because your cycles come every six years and some people have missed all those cycles it's called kairos moments the chronos moment is designed to prepare for the kairos moment the kairos moment is what determines your age some of us have 12 cycles in our lifetime some have five some have 15. if you don't maximize it have you not noticed some of you is every four years that you go to a revival meeting or you meet a prophet or you have an encounter it happened to you when you were in SS. it happened to you now you are in 300 level it happened to you third year in your work and you think these are common you are not sensitive you don't know that cycles are happening the world is designed to work in seasons and cycles corn doesn't grow every time mango does not produce every time that is the same way your spiritual dimensions are not activated every time what the holy ghost does is that he carries you through trainings either through the church you attend the pastors that mentor you until the season comes then the driver shows up and then all of a sudden you start sensing that all your salary you should give it to the orphanage or give it for church project and you're wondering why 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 it doesn't happen all the time you are being driven because the holy ghost wants to bring you to a corner where your spirit depends on him only and everything that will be a distraction he will take you away from it some of you is movies some is food some is money he will drive you away from all of those things even jesus the son of god had to be taken to the wilderness the idea of the wilderness is not for you to suffer he said he suffered them to hunger so that they may know that man shall not live by bread alone it's a training to help you trust and depend on God because you have found the comfort zone and in that comfort zone the river can flow so the Holy Ghost will make sure he takes you away from the comfort zone so that the waters of life can gush out this is why the Bible said they that believe out of their belly shall flow rivers but you have not seen anyone the reason is because rivers flow after you are driven when Jesus yielded Matthew 4 1 Matthew 4 15 he said the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles the people that sat in darkness they have seen a great light this man is 30 years old he has walked these borders before what happened you must be driven before the waters break forth he returned in the power of the spirit the power was there but you will return in that power until you have paid the price of yieldedness those are the days when your pride will be crushed those are the days when your confidence in the flesh will be crushed. And like Paul, you will say, we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit, rejoicing in Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. The Holy Ghost will become your weapon, but you must be driven. The second thing that makes for the release of the spirit is to tarry in his presence. Because after you are driven, you will now discover that a second law will be given to you to remain there. Acts 4, 26 to 31. The apostles were driven, they were in the upper room until the day of the outpouring. After the outpouring, the St. Henry showed up, arrested them, and flogged them thoroughly. Their confidence depleted. They knew that they had to go back to Tari. Because what we cause those cycles to now begin to repeat is the power of Tari. And in Acts 4, 29, 30, the Bible said, after they Tari, it said the place where they were was shaking. They were filled with the Holy Ghost again, and 
they spoke with boldness. Verse 33 said, with great power. They, God gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. Great grace was upon them. If you can't carry, you can't release life. Jesus, Matthew 17, from verse 2 to 4, he went to the mountain. The Bible said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to blister. It's like refinery. Those of us who study chemistry, it's, it's a fractionating tower kind of thing. The crude oil is there. Just hit it. When you hit it for a while, everything will start going up. At different boiling points, they will separate into mist. You will cool it and collect it. So something will separate at 60 degrees, turn to vapor. You will collect it on the other side, cool it and collect it. Another one is at 80. Another one is at 100. That's how those rivers open. Wisdom for you may take 40 degrees. But favor may take 90. So you can know everything. You are talking. People say, Kai, these guys have been something. So. But nobody will be led to bless you. Because you are operating at the heat frequency of wisdom. You have not entered favor. So when Paul was advising, he said, you dearly beloved. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Everything you have is in the technology of faith. He said, but it will take prayer for it to distill so that it becomes experiential reality. Tarry! Otherwise, the realities of God will be mixed in you as crude. Wisdom and favor and power is all junk together. No one is manifesting. It's when you tarry that they separate into different fractions. And those fractions are the things that will change your destiny. So if you want the river to flow, you must tarry. Those of us who go, uh, Father, we love you and sleep. <laughs> you will see that your younger brothers that you supported with school fees will pass. Their generation will separate them. You will be angry with God, but it won't change your story. If you want your story to be changed, you will stay on the altar. Your knee will become like a camel. Pray there, sleep there, wake up there, pray again. Now, after you tarry, number three, you take steps of faith. Oh, vain man, know it not thou, that faith without works is there. Thou believest that there's only one God. Thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles, but faith without works is dead. After you tarry, instructions will come. Step out. Only those who walk out see the glory of God. It's a day that journey to the deep. They are the ones that see the wonders of God. You don't pray for the sick, you will not find healing. You don't go for evangelism, you will not know word of knowledge. You don't give, you will not know abundance. You must take steps of faith if the river will flow. And finally, Allow yourself to be inspired that those who have gone ahead of you. You say, follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. If they have obtained before, they can show you the way. Hey, they can show you. I know the things that happened to me because I focused on Bishop Oedeko. I know the things that happened to me because I focused on Pastor Chris. They were troubled. See, those who trained us, they trained us with three things. Prayer and fasting, the word and stories. Those days, if you hear some stories, appetite will die. I heard of the story of a man, a saint called Dennis, Saint Dennis. He was so crazy about so winning. He was going, they cut off his head. The story said he carried his head on his hand and he trekked for several miles preaching. Where he fell down was where they built the cathedral. They cut the head, the head of a man. He carried the head, the head was preaching. Jesus, those were the kind of things they were telling us. I heard the story of St. Anthony of Padua that 30 years after he died, his tongue was still fresh. I said, what? They say he was a rocket preacher. The day he died, all the bells in the cathedrals in Padua were ringing on their own and children were waiting because one who carried witness had departed. Can you hear such stories and sleep? That's why some of us told God, if we will preach, we must preach with fire that a man's tongue didn't decay. The things they touched, a generation will rise. And you are part of that army. You are part of that army. You didn't come here just to hear and to see men shine. You came here because there is a shine on your inside that must manifest. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oroho, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.